as I said, when, when we talk about the division, there are two methods. Maybe you are familiar. The method one and the method two. You can use both. Okay. Method one is what? You are loading your shipment. Okay. You are loading your shipment in the container. Okay. And after that, you are using one accredited or certified what is a third party for weighing your shipment. Okay. They are weighing with what? With the the trailer itself, but they can segregate the weight, okay? Because they already know the weight of the trailer and uh, uh, you know the the cargo weight, okay? So in Kuwait, I'll tell you, Kuwait we have accredited uh, uh, the uh, weighing station like the big companies, Korapi and all, or you have in the port itself, one port, Shuik port, we have that facility. So what you will do if the company, you know that uh, uh, some companies they don't have this weighing facility, big companies plant or factory they will keep. Otherwise, they will load, they will go to the weighing station and they get the receipt and they will submit. But second is the most of the company they are doing the method two. What we will do? First, the container will come, the empty container on the track. So, Mizan is there, weighing is there. They will show the weight of the, the trailer, okay, and the weight of the empty container. It will show, okay. We will store it in the system. Then, after that, container will go for the loading. They will load the, all the pallet. They will do all the stuffing, the drainage, whatever thing they do, they come back again with the full load. Okay. Then this full load, they will get the, the you know, difference. Because you already have the system, the weighing system, what is the empty weight for the trailer and the, 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 the container you have. Or container weight number, you can see from the container door itself. Normally, 20 feet container, you know that. It's a 2100 something will come. Right. So you have that. Then, you will wait, then you will get the what the gross weight of your cargo into the container. So the point is the method to the declaration of the weight VGM is from shipper side itself. He has the facility, the container loading, damage, whatever thing, load and empty he has made and the full he will make now. Then he will get that details and what he will prepare. There is a format from the shipping line CMA and others like the word you will declare there what shipper name container name container number okay bgm method two you will say bgm method two and the gross weight this much hereby i declare here why we declare the shipment is contained this much gross weight okay signature from the authorization signature and stamp you will give you will scan to the shipping line it's okay fine okay and there is a fee also for the the vgm fee processing fee I think maybe 25, 40, the normal rate. This is for the processing fee, because if any activity is there, it must be handled, right? With the libraries or whatever thing, that's the VGM fee. So this is also like a MBL, HBL, VGM is the another important document. Okay, but just think, this VGM will not be affected by, you know, that bulk type of the shipment. Okay, you cannot do that. Okay, this is with the container, we have these two methods we are using. Otherwise, you have to declare, shipper has to declare the actual wage. Okay? Write Denzil or no? You are, Denzil, you are using that uh, bulk shipment or no? Only containers? No, no only containers. I was just checking the rate, sir. You told me that the VGM is it is $40 per unit. Yeah, but $40, right? It's coming like that. $40. $40, okay. yeah, $40 per unit. I've got an invoice which one shipment has, export shipment has, like that. Oh. Another document is there. I just want to inform you that the export order, maybe you are familiar with what is the export order. Yes. I just want to add this also. You know that whenever you have the export shipment, okay, what is the process? Uh, the other shipper, you have the shipment, okay? Shipment is ready, packaged, palletized, everything fine. And you have the documents, invoice, packing list, and certificate origin, whatever things you have now. The now shipment is ready, you have the booking, you made the booking, okay? Now the container will bring and you will go, you will stuff the container. I mean, you have cargo. So now you know that another process you remember in our basic uh, chapter for Asgar, I can tell you when the shipment is ready, next part is after the loading, there is a customs clearance process, right? Yes, yes, correct. Their work is there. So here what I'm saying is, this customs house broker, how you are getting your details, they cannot take the details from the shipper, what they declare, and they cannot put in the customs entry, right? It's not like that. They are licensed people, what they have to get, they have to get the, the real information, the proper information, especially the container numbers, type of the cargo approved by shipping line for loading from the shipping line itself, the carrier. Okay, so 
customs broker you are not, not asking the export order from you shipping instruction from you for the details of the shipment they are contacting the shipping line okay so export or what we are doing for example if i have the shipment you want two containers but the, the shipping line for example i am using the till or i am using the costco or the mers mers is most advanced yes they are using everything this uh, uh, online but this they are using what this document for example say excel sheet excel sheet there are two excel sheet they will send as a document for export order okay well first they are mentioning the details of the, uh, the shipper and say the number of the containers okay how many containers and gross weight of the containers if the five containers five into 20 or five into 40 and the gross weight of the containers one container gross weight okay you know the net weight and the gross weight difference net weight is the, the weight of the product gross weight is including what the damage you know damage packing pallet bags and in a belt whatever thing they declare okay and the empty container weight you can write or the by default they already have already filled there because of container number okay then the container number what you you will get but container number they will not give you know that maybe they give the container number there is some error will come maybe container is not available okay maybe some damage so you have to select the container number you enter everything and the second part again you have to put the each container number before we are saying how many containers the quantity and the how many gross weight okay and who is the uh, uh, shipper container destination and the agent number here now we are describing the second tab what the container numbers full container numbers 1 2 3 4 5 okay 20 or 40 1 2 3 4 5 i mean that all containers description this is the format time what we are getting from shipping line okay then we are saying the other details what uh, the shipper consignee and the location and notify party ship uh, agent every the normal thing what shipping line needs they want from your side as a shipper they don't want an error and issue from the custom this is the container number we collected. This is the shipper. This is the consignee exactly. Okay, number of containers. You enter everything. Shipping line will receive this data. They will upload in their system. Okay, this upload and what there in their system application, they will generate what the export order means like the DO. It will mention all the details. The problem, you know, that whenever you see this, you have to check the gross weight, the commodity details, and the inco terms where this actually. So because you know once you submit your the custom you think everything okay okay you see the photo of the do okay uh, EO, export order maybe you send for the buy on finally they'll find out maybe gross weight of the container you make the wrong or net weight and gross weight for one same it may happen sometimes you are copy and pasting your stuff right so you have to read properly what they are you have to mention that the the, 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 uh, the in code term properly okay and the the customer consignee and the, the shipper all the details and the, the weight of the container number of the container these are everything one by one they will check then customs entry they will check your data fine they will issue what the buy -on. so export order is issued by the carrier after you submit the data this export order the need for the customs of brokerage okay the mohalis we need for making the buy -on. you know the buy -on, right we are saying the buy -on or the custom entry okay if eo is ready then everything fine so they will make then only we we can move to the port because in the port near the buyer customs entry they will verify in their system again okay this is all food shipment these are this this one no issue this one they will ap approve for the custom inspection do the thing i just inform you what is the export order okay and the delivery order you know that already you know what's the delivery order delivery order is for the import shipment we are saying the delivery order what the shipment is reach the the destination right you have to submit if you, you know if it is the the original bl or if you have the telex release right express whatever things you are using you have submitted the relevant document to the shipping line the destination office from there what they will do they will uh, issue your delivery order right they will accept the bill of lading if it is the express release you already have the message there email message from the shipping line so you don't have to submit what the you know original bill of lading right so they can release the what the, the delivery order so delivery order is also the document we are we are getting from the carrier or their agent office they are approving this shipment they are approving to the customs this shipment is the right person is the alcohol or this is the customer and these are the things and with that you know that they are giving them what the container release note very important one 
maybe you heard about the container release node what's the container release node because you know maybe you know that some shipment high value shipments okay if you don't have the custom duty and all or if you don't have the the, the charges for you know that uh, uh do you and all, what they will do you want to make the buy and and all right like the spot order you will get the what delivery order but they will hold what container release node because deliver order you can use what for making the buy and all container release not for what you have to get the container from the port and you have to take that so if the shipping company know you that okay i can release the delivery order but i will not give you what the container release not that can if you have the container release not the container number and all because carrier is saying release this container to the shipper right and they will mention what the date how many days you have to you i mean how many days you have to return back if you not return back there is a demerge or detention right you know yesterday you know that demerge and detention the difference demerge is actually the, the charge we are giving to the carrier but actually for the port using their land okay and the retention for the equipment we are using so uh, the container release note we have to get and if you cannot return back the what the container within the, that particular time you will call the shipping line or you have to go most of them you have to go directly and they will extend what the date one or two days you have to pay for that depends if the detention up to the company shipping company whether you pay or not but they will release and you have to pay the amount you can negotiate if it is the detention part or another thing but you have to get like that okay so this is something else so you know now the most of the important documents the ocean right one is the mbl another is the hbl another is the bgm export order delivery order what else uh, you can say for the information purpose dangerous uh, goods declaration right bg declaration one of that another one because you know you remember that there are so many shipments they will be classified as a dangerous goods it is dangerous for the environment it is dangerous for the people immediately or the long time basis right that's the reason dangerous means hazardous cargo it's not hazmat hazardous cargo hazardous and dangerous right so immediately it will affect dangerous goods for example you know that the chlorine right or uh, you know that the other type of the gases or the explosives there are so many items are cor uh, corrosive items radioactive items there are so many and miscellaneous like the you know that the batteries and all so there is one document in shipping it's known as that dangerous declaration dg declaration okay dangerous goods declaration so the important that i'm saying is you know that it's not like other shipment there is a special area for loading the shipment right and there is the charge also you remember that in my class i dg declare dg monitor inco monitoring charge right date kd so they have the, the special locations in the part not the general cargo they are keeping this one and there is a charge also for that but what they are going to declare you have to declare now that i'm saying now everything online you can declare online mills can and others even cma you have to declare online even ms start to declare online but still they will ask the original one as a proof okay there is a document they will give the format i think i have the format i will share today with you okay i have one format for that they will mention like the everywhere first the, the shipper can say any whatever you know that everything okay then you have to declare the un class and un number maybe you heard about that there are three important things for the dangerous goods declaration one is the un class there are nine classes that are declared as a dangerous goods by imo and iata okay imo for the maritime iata for the aviation okay so like the one uh, un class one okay for the explosives and the two i think you know that the flammable liquids okay no two is the gas i think i have that thing then three uh, flammable liquids flammable solid radioactive corrosive there are so many then the last one is the nine and uh, you know that uh, miscellaneous you know there are so many items you cannot fit into the eight group like the explosives or radioactive there are some other thing you can the, the batteries right the spray there are so many things are there dry ice you know mask face mask and uh, as vestos as yeah. vestos as vestos yeah yes yes so what i'm saying this type of the item so you have to declare un class which class is it's uh, related you know concept and the un number for example i am saying for my product 
uh, you know that chlorine or the caustic soda flakes is say maybe the un class 8 okay you say what's the corrosive if it is a flakes come onto your hand or somewhere so it will corrode your body okay corrosive you know that uh, un number i think is 2.3 chlorine so it's chlorine it's open if you breathe then immediately you'll be unconscious the poison okay inside so different type of the un class why it is that whenever something happen you know that uh, they are what they will check the shipment in the manifest of which shipment is there okay un class c so they have the handling team information they cannot handle the same un3 with the un8 right it's a different one poison and explosive different things are there and maybe you noted that most of the tangas road tangas you can see some stickers everywhere right usually you have stickers you know that the dg stickers are there there you can see you know the skull number for the chlorine and the marine pollutant number there they will mention your class number first any accident happened what they check the firefighters what, what they check the un class and un number because they are trained with these things how to handle the inco okay un class and un number it must be declared properly if anything wrong declared it's a big issue and there's a package what type of the package package one two three okay so it depends the severeness of the package normally the view our package is the two okay but this type of the corrosive and all one, two, three, these three things, okay, the DG, the how to take care in the declaration. And where you get this information, you cannot guess because you are working in a company. Your company, your safety team, right? The safety team, they will prepare the MSDS, material safety data sheet or safety data sheet. You have to get from them. And they are, this is their job, okay, making the MSDS. And the clause, I think 14, the clause. Yeah, it's a clo the, the section number 14 in the, I think, in the MSDS, it will show you the transportation handling, okay? There you can see, you know, that uh, UN number, UN class, and the package number and all. So it is easy for you, just take from there, and you put it on where your DG declaration, UN class, UN number, and package, okay? Now, what I'm saying is when you are declaring through online for the most, uh, you know, that uh, technological aisle they are using, there you'll see some issue. These three normally need for manual declaration, you know, but from them, there are so many questions. Marine pollutant, this way and that way, temperature, these, so many things are there. But you don't worry, you are the logistician, you are not technical side safety. You can just pass this to our, your sales department, sales department, they will uh, send to uh, their uh, HSE, or you know who's the safety related department they will tell you the thing your engineers they know that so you don't have to worry but what you have to worry you have to declare properly and a maximum what from experience what i'm saying whenever you are asking something for example milk say put this information this bag what is the package code for this bag okay not the pallet what the bag you are reaching inside after that you don't ask your team by phone you have to send email safe side this is the email from this, just give us a declaration because when they say something by phone, they can deny later, okay? But they have, if they have the information, as a fight forward, you also need to come how to get by email, then you can declare because you have the proof. Because anything happen, then they will check who declared these things. Then you say, I declare. You say later, I check this guy by phone. He said, nobody acted. You have to get the reference by email, especially when you are handling the DG. Okay, the basic information. This is the another important document, DG declaration. Okay, dangerous. Now we will take five minutes break and we will move to the next part. Okay, CFS, ICD, and brief introduction and the pre trade zone. Then air fight will start. Five minutes we will take the break. Okay. Okay. okay.
Okay. See, let's start here now. Uh, Stewdoring and custom clearance process for our shipment dosing flight. Okay. The Stewdoring charges related with our shipments. Okay. You know that you know the Stewdoring for every port there is a Stewdoring activity, right? Stewdoring is what you know that whenever we are sending your shipment for export, okay, for export shipment or the import, okay, collect the shipment when it's come to the destination, okay. There is one team or there are some activities that must be performed. When the vessel is arrived, you are getting the information, vessel arrived notice, right? That when it's receiving at the port or the anchoring or the berthing and after that, there are activities, the containers must be offloaded from the vessel, okay? And it must be what uh, moved to the, the st staging area, right? And there must be the equipments, the labels and the what? Uh, you know that the trailers, stasis, whatever things you have to screen for moving and the same. All these activities will be what involve the stevedor job. So stevedor is actually the activities involved for loading and unloading the cargo from the vessel. Don't think not only the container vessel. You have different types of the vessel as per the nature of the materials. The bulk vessel, right? The brake wall type. You know the liquid type. There are different types of the vessels are there. Okay, they are carrying or whatever thing. So every port, okay, there is a stewardoring. So the, 